matrix about porting and, and porting, and, and a lot of people might think, we don't have time for that. You go to work, you call, home. <laughs> you call home tired, you might have to cook, you might have to clean, the pick the nigga homework. By the time you reach to your bed, and your husband and then wait, like, so you don't have to take care of me tonight, and you don't watch me, like, really? <laughs> help me wash up, you know? And we don't have, we don't, I feel like we don't take that time there anymore. I feel like just like um, anything else you have to prepare. So Kama Sutra teaches you how to prepare for sex. It's not, it's an, it's an art, it's a ritual. And that's something we just jump into um, and do it, you know? In our culture, I should say, we kind of grow up with this mentality that sex is for the man. Sex is our reward for the man, for the woman gives to a man, say, provide for her, to just be a man, you know? Um, I don't want a man, and you don't want a woman, and, and, and if I carry you for a date these days, or if I carry you, you're supposed to give me sex in return. And we kind of get into this culture where everybody, they try to back flip, jump on it, split on it, bounce on it, and, but if you try to add an anything there, and you don't really know your body, and you don't know how thing, what, what the your erogenous zones, if you don't know what the your, where your gist, how you really become in a position there. A lot of people have sex because, all right, the man wants sex, I don't really want sex, or I need some money. It's a part of the relationship. A lot of really, a lot of people there, I have this thing to see that says, there are a lot of people that are not in relationships that are having sex, and there are a lot of people that are in relationships that are not having sex. Um, and that is where I want to use my sex education to um, get people to understand and to become more intimate with their partners and, and really evolve their sex lives per se. It's about aligning your mind with your physical and vice versa. It's kind of like yoga. So a lot of the poses where you sit is like yoga poses. Um, because yoga is the same thing, mental, spiritual, physical, everything in alignment, right? Mouth and lips is a very sensual part of the body as well. You can actually treat the mouth as if though it is the vagina and the tongue as if though it is the penis. And the same way that you would use your penis to rub against the um, rub against the clay, you could use the, the tongue to rub against the little top right here, you call it the cupid's bow. That's a very sensitive area. It's, it's supposed to be um, very similar to the clit. Um, you know, you rub around the lips, like, like you're rubbing around the, the, the vulva. You stick your tongue in and out as if though you're sticking or trusting the penis in and out of the vagina. All of that is basically making love and all of that are just kissing. There's a lot of stigma and shame around men and the size of the penis. Everybody want a man inch dick or a 10 inch dick, the eight inch dick. And what are you going to do with it? You know? Um, penises that size are usually very uncomfortable in the beginning. You need like a loo. And you're really limited as to the amount of things where would really do power, bigger penis as opposed to like one six or seven inch penis. Um, and then there's something like, like mutual masturbation. Mutual masturbation is where you're, you're jerking him off and he's jerking you off or he's you know, sticking his finger, things like that. All of that is a part of foreplay. All of that is about getting ready for sex because one of the most important things is having the body ready for sex and making sure that the um, pelvic area is open and ready to receive because what you don't want is to be nervous and still be very, up, you know, wound or tightly wound because then it's not going to be pleasurable. It's sometimes it might hurt because you're not fully relaxed.